Hello everybody, my name is Anatoly and today we are reacting to one of the lowest rated South Park episodes ever. This one is called Pip. Is it really that bad? Let's find out. A uh, classic song right away. A British atmosphere. Ah, Dickens. The imagery of cobblestone streets, craggy London buildings, and nutmeg-filled Yorkshire puddings. Where, where the hell do I know this narrator from? I have a sudden feeling that I've seen the guy on TV somewhere. He looks a little bit like Sting, not, not the wrestler one. I'm a British person. <laughs> For years now, the character Pip has been featured prominently in the American I'm a show British South person. Park. However, many Americans don't realize where Pip came from. He's the prowling, adorable little Englishman from Charles Dickens' timeless classic Great, Great Expectations. Expectations. That one I did know. Because of South Park, have agreed to take a break from their regular show and instead present the prestigious Dickens tale in its entirety from beginning to end. Indeed, after watching this show, you'll know the timeless classic as if you'd read the cliff notes themselves. Our story is set in England. Now I do understand where the hatred for this episode comes. People who generally enjoy Cartman killing someone's parents or Kyle having a Jewish stroke, I don't think they're the biggest fans of Great Expectations. Draftshire upon Top Smart, where a young blonde-haired boy named Pip was on his way to see his parents. Hey, at least they're not like Canadians. They have normal faces, except for the teeth, of course. <laughs> it is always nice paying a little homage to a Batman. I cannot get over the joy with which he entered this cemetery. Don't worry, sister is still taking very good care of me. She just loves to smack me in the face and tell me I'm worthless. Oh, we have such fun together. <sighs> Classic British day off. Well, it's getting dark, Mom and Dad. I'll see you again soon. What? Ah! what are you doing here, you little wibbersham? Oh, hello. Why, you look like an escaped convict. Did we breaky wakeys out of prison? That oh, is, dear. that is, that, so that, that is the dental hygiene of a British person right there. But I'm kind of confused with the superfluous positivity of Pip. Where the hell does it come from? Your parents are dead. You get beaten up by your sister and bullied by Cartman. Here, let me help you. What are you doing with those? I'm an apprentice blacksmith. There you are. And here's a sandwich. You must be starving. Yeah, why are you so easy to help me? Well, it's not for me to judge you, sir. We are all the same. Well, he escaped. Uh, God well, damn you, Pip. Though, I'm afraid. God damn you, Pip. Where have you been? Ah! A lovely day, isn't it? What the hell's lovely about it? Joe takes this boy some bloody cynicism. Oh, I don't know about that. I just like to be blacksmithing. Hey, look, I've made me a metal fire poker. A lot of bloody good of fire poker's gonna do with us. God damn it, you know how I mentioned that nothing is gonna beat the Jack officers when it comes to annoyance, when it comes to the quality of being annoying, of annoying the shit out of you. God damn you, South Park, British people. Can we not have like a normal voice pitch that's like in the middle of the spectrum? Stop your mouth, you bastard! You know what? A time of spoon and not girl droppings, you metal pounding fairy! And you, why don't you get a job? You're eight years old now! <laughs> Why would you get a job? You're eight years old now. Shut up, you silly neck! What the hell are we supposed to do with the metal newspaper? Well, for starters, we can look in the want ads and see if we can find Pip a job. Oh, look here. Young man wanted for paid position. Where? Where? Havisham resident six young boy to play with lonely daughter. We'll pay up to... 20 quid a day? That's a lot of money, money. You can keep a little girl company for 20 quid a day, Pip. And old Mrs. Eversham is the wealthiest woman in the town. British people, is this accurate? Because I believe this might actually be a good depiction of your everyday life. I think we need some alcohol here and the, the bingo is pretty much complete. Well, the very next day, Pip went to old Miss Havisham's house to inquire about the job. And it was there that he met the girl of his dreams. Thank you, Mr. Sting. Who are you? I've come to answer the want ad. Is that so, you smelly little bastard? What? This way, you pathetic squirt of vaginal discharge. You pathetic squirt of vaginal discharge. God damn it. That was nice. 
That was very nice. Don't tell me this episode sucks anymore. That was highly exquisite. I like this episode so far. But to be frank, the British people in this episode, they make Jack officers feel like Scott Dennerman must die. <laughs> this way, you beef-witted, shriveled-up monkey's penis. God, the, the insults, they, they keep getting spicier. Baby vomit. Baby vomit. In here. Oh, after you, miss. I'm not going in there, you stupid puddle of a homeless man's urine. Puddle of a homeless man's oh, urine. Does it frighten you to look upon a woman who has not seen the sun in over 20 years? Oh, no, no. You, you sort of look upon women who have not seen the sun for over 20 years quite a lot these days. I sometimes have sick fancies. And I have a fancy I should like to see someone play. So play. Uh. Play. Estella, play with this boy. With him? You know, throughout my existence, I have seen my bad share of tea. But this one, I did not know that you can achieve such results 200 years before Mountain Dew was invented. But he's just a commoner! But you can break his heart. All right, boy, let us play. <sighs> Radio, what are we going to play? We are going to play a little game called Smack the Blonde Boy in the Head with a Large Log. Oh, yes! My sister and I play that game at home all the time! Who will go first? Uh. Oh, you stupid, pathetic boy! What do you think of her? Well, I... I think she's very pretty. Hmm. It is kind of understandable. Yes. I think she's rather insulting. You quite fancy her, don't you? Come back again next week. We shall play some more. Yeah, of course they're gonna be taken aback by his positivity. Who is not gonna do that? A friendly reminder of the fact that... His parents died. Mr. Pip has a certain Stockholm Syndrome the size of that woman's asshole. Stop dreaming about me, you slow-witted rectal belch. <laughs> day after day, Pip visited Estella. Sometimes they would play, sometimes they would talk. But every single hmm. day, Pip's love for Estella grew. Of course, because... Uh, Don't you he... want to play anymore? Boy, do you still think I'm pretty? Oh, well, yes, miss. And do you still think I'm insulting? Oh, uh, not so much as before. Oh, I hate you. You're an oozing, painful hemorrhoid that belches pus. Oh, dear. You may kiss me if you like. What? 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 Come. What kind of duality of the British soul is this? Oh, what fun it is to God damn it. it. You there, the prowling little boy. I bet you can't jump on my back. Go on, then try and jump on my back. Who is that? <gasps> Just another playmate hired to amuse me. You didn't think you were the only one, did you? <laughs> oh, my brother... Give Pip a closet already, goddammit. To be frank, Pip reminds me of a true Christian. This is a biblically accurate Christian. Thought I was. Oh, you silly, small, testicled boy. Come, let us walk through the rose garden. <sighs> the insults, they, they, they keep yes, getting better. She will break his pathetic heart into a million pieces. Oh, uh, wait. She's gonna come from that, right? She well, comes from hearts being broken. Oh, Pip was in. He was hired to be the friend of the very harsh and beautiful Estella, and although she treated him like dirt, or perhaps because she treated him like dirt, Pip found himself yes, more in love because. with a girl each and every day. Oh, bless him! Isn't he lovely? But isn't it sad? Because Pip knew yeah. that someone as sophisticated and as wealthy as Estella could never love him. But he was just a simple blacksmith's apprentice. If the little boy loves Estella that much for beating him up, imagine what fantasies he has about Cartman. I know at least five different occasions on which Cartman hit him in the balls. And there you have it, your very own metal fuzzy dice. <laughs> yes, I see. <laughs> Lovely. Eh, yeah, what's all this, Pip? Joe, do you know anything about girls? Sure, they're those things with vaginas in them. <laughs> Oh, there are those things with vaginas in them. Not all the time, Mr. British person, because, you know, there is such a country as uh, Thailand. Actually, Heather Swanson is more beautiful than any British lady in here. Who could that be? Joe the blacksmith? The same. I'm a lawyer from London in search of a young lad named Peep. I'm Pip, sir. Mr. Blacksmith, I've been sent here to offer you a reasonable sum of money in exchange for your apprentice. Oh, well, Pip's not for sale, sir. I have a client who wishes to give this bright child a future. Anything he desires, do you still object? Heaven forbid I should stand in the way of Pip's future, but... He will one day inherit a handsome property. But the owner of that property wants him first to travel to London and learn to be a gentleman. That's great news! There's only one condition, Pip. Your benefactor wishes to remain anonymous. Oh. 
But it must be Miss Havisham. Oh, oh. If you have any suspicion of who that person might be, you are to keep it in your own breast. Understood? I think the Catholic Church would be very fond of this ability to just uh, acquisition boys like this. Thank you, Lord. I was never sold to a British person. <sighs> then you will go to London in a week's time. Here's 20 sovereigns. Well, Blacksmith, you look stunned. I am, sir. Then I shall take my leave. Good evening, gentlemen, and we shall see you in London next week, Pip. Goodbye, sir. Pip, a young gentleman of great expectations. This is gonna be heartbreaking. I can't sense it. Wait, Mr. Pocket. He is a distinguished young lad who will help you on your way to being a gentleman. I trust you see no problem with this? None, sir. I should think not. On up then, and prepare for school on the morrow. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Look, me, me and Pip, we kind of have the same haircut, right? I think that's a friendly fire from my side. Mr. Pip? Mr. Pocket? Pray come in. Thank you kindly. You look rather familiar. As to you, perhaps we've seen each other before. As to our lodging, it's not by any means splendid. This is our sitting room, just chairs and tables and carpet and so forth. This is my little bedroom, rather musty. And this is your bedroom. My, how lovely. Oh, what a gay time we shall have. And I do mean gay as in festive, not as in penetration of the bum. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean gay as in festive, not as in penetration of the bum. Ladies and gentlemen, how is this episode bad? I've got like 10 quotes already that, that go into my linguistic arsenal. Oh, dear me, I beg your pardon. You're holding your bags all this time. Pray let me take them. I'm quite ashamed. Oh, it's quite all right. Lord, bless me. Why, you're the pale young gentleman I saw in Miss Havisham's house. Why, yes, of course, you're the pale little boy. Well, what a smashing coincidence. Perhaps, but perhaps not. Miss Havisham is very generous indeed. That old video, I assure you, I have nothing to do with her anymore. She's absolutely mad. Well, what do you mean? Well, don't you know about Miss Havisham's melancholy past? Dear me, it's quite a story, and should be discussed over dinner. Come. Right, time for a smashing meal and the story of Miss Havisham. Pocket, may I ask you a favor? I am desperately trying to become a gentleman for the love of a certain girl. So would you please tell me if I do something wrong at the table? You'll do fine, dear fellow, just fine. Now, on to Miss Havisham. She was raised by a wealthy father and grew up to be a somewhat of a spoiled brat. And now I might mention, Pip, that in London is not the custom to put the knife in the mouth. Oh, dear, I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> not at all, I'm sure. In London, it is certainly not a custom to put the knife in the mouth. You put it in the liver of another person. I want to see a battle between 10 British people with knives and one American guy with, with a gun. Grew up to be a lovely young lady and soon a man came along, which gets me to the cruel part of the story. Merely breaking off my dear pit to remark that a dinner napkin should never be placed into the tumbler. Sorry, sorry. Not at all, I'm sure. So this man pursued Miss Havisham closely and professed to be devoted to her. She passionately loved him back. The marriage day was fixed, the wedding dresses bought, the wedding guests all invited, and finally the day came. But not the groom. And I break from the tale now only to mention that one should never pass gas at the dinner table. Oh, excuse me. Not at all, I'm sure. So the Groom never British people, strike number three. Havisham received 20 minutes before the wedding. At half nine, the time when she stopped all the clocks in the house. But afterwards, she laid waste to the entire house, as you have seen it, and has never since looked upon the light of day. And the story ends, Pip, with me suggesting that one should never pull out the wee wee and check it for scabs whilst at the table. Terribly sorry, Pocket. Not at all, I'm well, Why don't they, why, the, why don't they show it? I would actually love to. Never mind. So basically, because of this traumatizing experience of Miss Havisham, she likes to take her anger out on, um, on little boys. Quite understandable, right? I think so. And after it all, after weeks and weeks of intense schooling, Pip was finally a full-fledged gentleman. Proud of himself, Pip decided to pay Miss Havisham a visit to thank her for her generosity and to see if he was indeed now good enough for Estella. Good evening, Miss Havisham. Come closer, Pip. My, you're quite the gentleman now, aren't you? Thank Please don't you. quiff on him. Estella's been off to school as well. She's become quite the lady. Would you like to see a picture of her? Oh, my. She is even prettier than before. Oh, you love her, don't you, Pip? I don't know. I mean, I think about her every day. Do you know what love is, Pip? It is blind devotion, unquestioning self-humiliation, utter submission, trust and belief against yourself and against the whole world, giving... And uh, penetration of the bomb, I shall add. I did not read uh, Great Expectations by Charles Dickens, but I think we're gonna have a very traumatizing, very sad and uh, full of blood ending. Because of course it's Pip and his existence is supposed to be tragic. Where will I find her? There's a dance at the palace tomorrow night. Estella will be there. At the Red and Alley. Out and love her. Love her. Thank you, Miss Havisham, for everything. I'm the happiest boy in the land. And if she wounds you, love her. If she tears your heart into pieces, and as you get older, it will tear deeper. Love her. Man, I hate Pip, but... Yes, our young Pip had come a long way. From the apprentice of a blacksmith to a fine young gentleman of great expectations. And now he was to finally see his beloved Estella again at a grand ball held by the King of England, Tony Blair. 
It was here that Pip would finally and formally ask Estella to be his girlfriend. And all would be right with the world. Yeah, absolutely right. Except for the little fact that Estelle is probably gonna put a bayonet up his asshole. And he's gonna love it. I've become a gentleman. May I? I suppose. <laughs> what kind of stroke is this? Well, I was sent to be schooled in London. I see, and you no longer... Well, what is with this movement? Oh, I see Joe once in a while, but I don't have much in common with him anymore. Now that I'm a gentleman and all. Naturally. Yeah, this is the lamest dance ever, again, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry. Why? Because I believe I'm in love with you, Pip. You must know that I have no heart. I think you do. Oh, I have a heart to be shot or stabbed in, no doubt. And if it ceased to beat, I should cease to be. But you know what I mean. I have no softness there, no sympathy, sentiment. I see past that, Estella. I see a little girl who wants to be warm and kind. Hey, Estella, let's get out of here. All right, Steve. Just one moment. <laughs> I don't believe that the guy in the book looked like uh, Skylar from the Timmy episode. But you know, I think that the prospect of cacoldic practices is gonna make Pip even more devoted to this lady. Who is that? That is Steve. He is 17 and has a car. I see him. <laughs> <laughs> I should. He's my boyfriend. Boyfriend? What's the matter, Pip? I don't understand. I did everything right. But he has a car, Pip. Pip. I'm sorry. I love my Joe. It's, it's the way it goes sometimes, Pip. He's 17 and has a car. I'm, I'm very, I'm... Leaving. Well, what is Otto von Bismarck doing in the back, ladies and gentlemen? I know that he created Germany, but but he doesn't have a car, so what the hell is he doing here? I don't believe we have ever seen Pip express some uh, sentiment of sadness before. Miss Havisham, you have to talk to Estella. She's going out to... Well, 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 if it isn't Mr. Pip. <laughs> Drink Miss a Havisham, milkshake. But, uh, don't they make a handsome couple, Pip? Look at the way he holds her hand. <laughs> but I don't understand. You sent me away to become a gentleman so that I could be with Estella. Things aren't always what they seem, Pip. Oh, what's the matter? Did she break your heart? Yeah. Well, I suppose that if you set out to break my heart, you did a very good job of it. Because it certainly does hurt. Yes, tell me about the pain. Tell me about the crushing and the prickly things. Man, I think she is coming while she's quiffing right now. Being so ravenous for the broken hearts of little fellas with Stockholm Syndrome. Congratulations, lady. That is that is very nice. Someone has a hold of my heart and is squeezing it very tight. Man, yeah. Yes, and it is somewhat difficult to You're breathe. You're supposed to be positive, hey, goddammit. You mean that this whole thing was just a setup by your mom? Is your heart broken as well? Tell me all about it. But why do you make your daughter hurt people? Why? Well, that's simple. Because I need the tears of broken-hearted men to use in my Genesis device. You see, my foolish child, I'm growing very old. But tonight I will fuse my soul into Estella's once and for all, and then I can go on breaking men's hearts for another generation. Nice. What the hell? Estella, prepare yourself for the Genesis platform. Oh, no, you don't. You're my girl, and I'm not letting you walk out on me. Skyler, <laughs> what kind of romantical Frankenstein is this one, ladies and gentlemen? I don't believe Charles Dickens quite pictured the story like this, which of course, shame on him. My robot monkey should take care of you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Charles Dickens. Very cool. Man, robotic monkeys. Pip, they always get me. That's right. You're safe and warm now. Miss Havisham, she has all the men who've had their hearts broken by Estella trapped in her house. Oh, why would she have wasted all that time sending me to school and turning me into a gentleman? Well, about that, Pip, there's another person who wants to see you. Hello, Pip. You remember me? I'll rip off your arms and shove them up your arse. Why? You're the escaped convict I helped a long time ago. Yes. After you helped me, I moved to Wales and made something of myself. If it weren't for you, I'd have never become a millionaire. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, a millionaire! Moral of the story, if you see a prisoner, let him go! We cannot possibly keep all of them in Australia. He's the one that sent you off to be a gentleman! You? But why? Because back then you treated me like any other person. You weren't a snob and you helped me like you would a rich man. Oh dear, all this time I thought it was Miss Havisham. <sighs> She totally let me believe it. I tried to tell you, Pip, she's a vengeful, spiteful woman and wanted nothing more than to see you hurt along with the rest of the male sex. Well, I've certainly learned a lot. That being a gentleman doesn't mean learning to dance or proper table manners. It means being a gentle man. Gentle to everyone. Right out, Pip. 
Right -o. And now I suppose there's only one thing left to do. What's yeah, take a bayonet and stick it up Miss Haversham's asshole. But knowing that this is Pip, he's gonna seek true love. I don't know, man. If we get Pip with a bazooka fighting robo monkeys, I'm gonna come. Pip? If Miss Haversham is determined to do this to others, let's go kick her ass! Yeah! Thank you, Pip. This is one of the bravest things he has ever said in his uh, little uh, Dickens Stockholm Syndrome life. In which the stage is set for an epic showdown. Miss Havisham's robot monkeys prove a formidable foe, <laughs> but Pip is not about to let Estella's soul be forever consumed by the Genesis device. And now the thrilling conclusion of Great Expectations. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine the Mr. Sting look-alike having to narrate all of this with with a straight face. Are you ready, Estella? Are you ready to complete the cycle? Yes, yes mother. <laughs> well. Not so fast, you ugly ancient bitch. Pip? Your man-hiding days are over, Havisham! Quite the contrary, Blacksmith. My revenge on the male race is... Oh, the guy's hanging in the bag. Dear God, Pip, look! Estella, help me! I'm your boyfriend! So am I! And me! We were all Estella's boyfriends at one time or another, now we're doomed! Yes, cry away, Mayors. Once your tears have collected into the Genesis device, the fusion of Estella and me will be complete. You won't get away with this! Won't I? <laughs> <laughs> God damn it, ladies and gentlemen, I don't care what everybody believes. I think this is a good episode. Let the transformation begin. <laughs> Pip, she started the voice! <laughs> Bucket, get over there and do whatever it takes to keep those blocks from crying. Right, okay. It begins. Come, Estella, Ooh, you can't want to of this. It is what I was raised for. Hello, gentlemen. Oh, whatever you do, please do not cry. Havisham's device fuels itself on your tears, I'm afraid. Oh, we not to cry. Our hearts have been broken, our lives ruined, and now we are set to die. Yes, but just think about panda bears. Oh, they're so cuddly and sweet, panda bears are. What silly little noses they have. I prefer red pandas, to be honest. They're almost extinct. Oh, right, right. Let's not think about panda bears, then. Let's think about... Swimming. Oh, what jolly fun swimming is with a splishy splash and a Swimming, don't, don't tell Matthew Perry this one. I'm really sorry for the off topic, but do you know what is the favorite metal band of Matthew Perry? Drowning pool. Yes. Get out of that chair, you old cow. <laughs> you are really <laughs> really <laughs> toxic <laughs> spit. You are a wonderful toxic <laughs> spit, <laughs> Mr. Millionaire Convict. You have no heart, but you do, and I shall prove it to you once and for all. <laughs> Look at this adorable little bunny. Oh my, Beep. he's very cute. Priorities, Pip. Oh, this person wouldn't care at all about this bunny. They'd just as soon break its neck. <laughs> no! Ah! I've seen bunnies having their necks broken in Moldova, but god damn it. That was not a passage of my life that I was willing to revisit. But look at this bunny. There, you see that? You have too big a heart to kill two baby bunnies. Oh, what fun the little like squeak. Stars. Ice skating. Oh, what fun ice skating is. Who can catch right, me? I remember catch the Fargo. Ice king? That's me. I can't fight them off no more. Nine. Nine baby bunnies. A person with a heart could never kill nine baby bunnies. So you do have too big a heart to... <laughs> Ten baby bunnies. <laughs> the little crack <laughs> on their necks. Oh, please, sirs, you must not cry. We can't help it. You're boring us to tears. <laughs> Babe, it's too late. Is she Six gonna become the new Terminator? Uh. I don't want to. I don't see the point in this. What? I don't want to kill any more of them. There! You see? Wait, how many you bunnies know? did it take to... Did it take like 20 bunnies to change your mind? I don't remember any person from my village becoming a better human being after genociding some bunnies. You think so? Let me see it. Maybe I can kill it. No, no, I'm sure of it. You have a heart. You want your own life. Come with me now! Yeah. Does 10 but Never mind. Does Ted Bundy also have a heart after stopping at uh, person number 30? Hop smart pit. Actually, a good ending. Well, there has to be something tragic in this. Any revenge on any more blokes, eh? Yes, her poor miserable life is finally over. You're released from her now, Estella. Now we can begin our life together. Yes, yes, my small testicle love. Oh, I'm so glad everything has worked out. Where are my little bunnies that you borrowed then, Pip? And they all lived happily ever after. 
Except what? Pocket, who died of hepatitis B. <laughs> <laughs> but how the hell did they live ever happily after if Pip is in America right now being bullied by it? Every America. So ends Charles Dickens' Great Expectations. Yeah, with the Robo Monkeys. We hope you now have a deeper appreciation for Pip, and indeed, all masterpieces of literature like this one. Until next time, I'm a British person. Good night. <laughs> Thank you, British person. They've even changed the credits at the end. Ladies and gentlemen, this was a great episode. I don't know why everyone is complaining about this one. We certainly didn't have the boys in this one, but I think for the recipes that we had, this is quite good. I really think that this one is way better written than Jack Officers or uh, Terrence and Philip, not without my anus, God forbid. Although I have not read Great Expectations by Charles Dickens, I think this was quite a uh, quite an accurate depiction. <laughs> <laughs> Robo monkeys. This episode actually made me respect Pip a little bit because he let go of his cacaldic side for a moment and concentrated on his vengeful side, which I didn't know he had in the first place. The fact that he wanted to whoop Miss Havisham's ass at the end, that is quite respectable, I shall say. And also, I'm gonna give this episode an extra point for authenticity. Why not? But that was it for today. Thank you for watching. This would mean like, subscribe, comment, all the usual stuff. See you guys. I'm again here.